Hi everyone and welcome back. As I explained in the previous video, we are going to write a couple of front-end apps in a individual videos and those applications will be some kind of like this. Okay, let's say the food app, we are building some kind of, a, we are going to create some kind of a board, right? Or some kind of a airline app or this kind of a UI. So these kind of simple application which I have built in the past, now I'm just improving them with the TypeScript, with the test cases, with the proper strategy, like how to design components. So I thought of uh, doing all of these live, like this is a small assignment I have received in past. This is kind of, I need to add a filter. So what we can do is we can think of using some cool libraries, libraries like, okay, Tailwind, libraries like AZ Grid to create a, some kind of a grid which provides you all the different kind of features because AZ Grid is some uh, one of the library which is most popular when it comes to designing grid. AZ Grid uh, is compatible with all different framework. Here we can use, uh, here we are using, here we can use a Tailwind, like a simple filters we need to build and we just need to mock the data, uh, side drawer. Here it's a airline app. We are going to mock an API, get the data and show them in a grid and then apply these kind of filters. Okay, this can also be done either with a tailwind or just using React TypeScript setup. Okay, and this is just a simple simulation how to capture the data coming over the stream. So there is a, we can call that as a data which is being emitted from the source and we are going to just define the type Okay, array type one warning or info and based on that we are going to stack them in a different uh, uh, vertical stacks. I mean this particular is for type one, type two, type three, you can clear them out. All those things we are going to play with the context APIs in React. And this is, uh, what I'm going to do is this uh, UI I'm going to build with a tailwind, like how to build a header, new bar, uh, these kind of uh, things. So we'll get more familiar with the Tailwind CSS, a utility framework. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to start with the first airline app. Okay, this is going to be simple. We have a simple header, then we have a uh, labels, and then we have just a grid, right? We can use a flex box to just uh, grid, and we can populate this whole data inside a context, and then we can play with the, the context by applying these filters. Okay, so let's get started with this. So what we are going to do is, this is a simple setup, a React TypeScript, right? Uh, you can create a React TypeScript skeleton using npx uh, react, create react app, and you can just pass the template as a TypeScript. Okay, so first of all, uh, we need to talk about, okay, what is the data source? So we are going to create a line.ts. This is a React TypeScript project, and we are going to use a TypeScript everywhere. And what we are going to do, we are going to use Exios or uh, fetch JSONP. Okay, let me just see what we can use. Okay, I'm going to access a particular uh, public endpoint from a company. Okay, so here we can have a what is what kind of data we are going to get. So I will create an interface for that. This is airline data. The same data we are going to populate on the UI, right? So it has an interface like this. What is a site? What is a code? What is alliance? Because those are alliance. You can see one world is alliance, star alliance, like we have a sky team alliance, and there is a, a grouping based on the alliance, right? If you are not providing any filter, we will show all the airlines. Okay, this is the alliance name. This is the, the logo URL. And then we have the name of uh, the airline company name and then the phone. This data we are going to uh, capture from an API call. So how we can do this? We can write an interface layer, export const API, let's say. And in this API, we can write a simple method async get all okay a sync get all method and what it is going to give us this will give us the the promise of airline data 
right this a line data is a array we are going to get a multiple so this is just a type definition now we can actually get const data equal to await so i already have the, the url of that that url is this this i'm going to hit to capture the data so this is the actual url okay so what i will do is exeos await uh, fetch jsonp because i need to resolve this cross origin issues if i do exeos and fetch i will encounter those so i can simply hit this particular endpoint and you need to pass additional attribute jsonp callback okay that will help us to fetch the data <coughs> so console.log data you can also log it or here what we are doing is we need to convert the data into json right this is how jsonp works you already know how to do the call with exeos you need to do dot data in the fetch also need to serialize it in the json so await uh, data dot json here we get the actual data and we can return the response this is just our simple api layer okay this call can be a simple exeos or fetch exeos is pretty much simple here we are using jsonp and we got the data okay now this api call will be triggered from our component on the initialization so what we are going to use we are going to use the context apis first so let's see what it is context api is a new concept in the react 16 what it does is it is kind of create a mini redux for you what it does is it puts the data in the context provider and if you are a consumer as a children component of this you can access the data or you can trigger the callback you can update the state everything so it is something like this you are creating a provider and here you have the consumers right so inside a provider you set the data and the consumers should be able to access it it prevents the props drilling right now what we do is we set the data here and then our child components keep receiving it and then we keep doing cascade so it's like uh, we are doing a props drilling this is the props in the parent component if i wanted to pass it to child component I will start assigning this in the props 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 so instead of that we can have a mini redux store in form of context and we can do this so we let's create a line context a line context.ts so what this context will be context we can get from react uh, import first of all import create context from react so first of all we need to get the looks like i didn't do the npm install create context from react and then i also need to get the a line data so we have api and a line data export const api okay this is an interface so let's import all those things later here what we are going to do we are going to create a context okay so this is the airline context you might have done this thing in the javascript react but how to do it in the typescript let's see this so we are going to capture the airline data airline data which is going to be the type of a line data here this is an array okay we need to import this i'm not sure why my vs code is not giving warnings for all these things i disabled couple of plugins and i think now the intelligence also not working i will fix that api forward slash a line so I got the A line data and then 
we can have couple of methods inside this context like uh, fetch a line first of all let me fix this uh, intelligence so where are we importing a line data i'm going out and then there is an api and then there is an airline okay so there, there can be a multiple methods in the context first of all how we are going to use the context right if you go into app.tsx if you go to index.tsx we have simply we are importing app component right so if we try to create app.tsx here app component tsx what it will contain it will contain our app component so i will first import uh, the react stuff react from react okay and here we can create app component this app component is a functional component and what code we are going to have inside this we are going to return so this is my whole component right what we can say is it is going to use the airline context we haven't built it i'm just talking about what it what it will look like airline app context dot provider okay and all the children component will come inside this provider so whatever you are going to put inside a provider should be accessible to all the components we are putting so let's say i am putting landing page here this is the component we are going to build and in this a line provider i will put okay i do have couple of things to be placed inside this so i'm saying okay a line data a line data i am adding inside this which is like okay some array or something like that okay then we have some methods like fetch airline data which is going to be a function returning null and then there is apply filter because we do have filters which you wanted to apply and these methods you can define inside this component okay this will be some data we are going to assign filter airline data right so what we can do we can use uh, use effect and can trigger the the first call which we wanted to fetch for fetching this particular data right so let's say i'm using use effect first time we need to populate this data inside our context so the call i'm making is get a line data and get a line data will be defined here that will be able to fetch the data for me it's like a simple ex, uh, async await call so const get a line data this is async and here i can make a call const data now here i need a api right api dot get all which we have defined so i need to import api api from so from where are we importing api and then there is a airline okay i will fix this intelligence soon and then we will enjoy that and then here i can have because now i received the data so i need to set this to the airline data i am using it as a camel case it should be a set airline data and data okay i can use use axios uh, use state to store this data like airline set airlines and what i'm going to do is use state and what kind of data i'm going to store what will be the type type will be the airline data of array 
uh, airline data which is of type array first of all I wanted to just fix this we can use the same airline it should be else a small case everywhere so airline data is an of an array and it is initialized with empty array so when we do the set airline it should be simple set airline <coughs> Okay, and we'll import all the required things like the context because we are passing the airline app context. So we'll go back to our context and we'll uh, we'll complete that and we'll come back here. I just wanted to talk about this is going to be the root component. Here you are going to pass the airline data. Right, this is the it can be simple airline data which you are passing, and this is a method apply filter you are going to define here const apply filter and you will do something that we will take care later right so in the context you have you are populating some data some methods are there actually we don't need this thing we can actually comment this out we have just airline data and apply filter okay this is like the initial data you wanted to populate and then once you start clicking on to the checkbox what should be the the next state okay okay so our path intelligence started working now so uh, let's go back to our context so we were creating a line context so this is the type of a line context we have just a line data and the apply filter a line data and apply filter and this is going to take a string right so we have to define what type of airline you wanted to filter and void as a return right so this is the type you have created now we will also initialize the default value of the context const context default value let's call it and this is of type airline context right so if because now we are writing typescript otherwise this could be just a simple one line code we are saying okay airline data is empty initially okay and then there is a apply filter apply filter is having type string and we are going to return initially empty object okay so this is like the default initialization of this and from here we can do is export const airline app context here we are creating the context and we can we are going to use a create context here create context and context will be of type airline context and uh, what is the value like context default value context default value so here we have created a airline app context which has a two things airline data and just you apply filters okay now we can import this we are importing it already here import airline app context and we are importing it from context uh, airline context okay and the same we are going to use for the provider airline app context dot provider and airline app context dot provider okay now it is resolved now what all things we have here i think the the default the type typing is mistake here it's a airline data okay apply filter there are two property landing page we need to create okay for now let's call it is we have h1 okay now we just need to import couple of things now our typescript started working use state use effect okay a line data is an interface 
so if you should check and it should suggest us i think the interface is a is capital do we have a fix for that yes add airline data for the interface this is the data this data is of type promise so we have to do await right now we are getting everything fixed that is the beauty of typescript that you will know what wrong you are doing so now what is the type of data data is of a line array a line data of array and this huge state is of also storing a line data array right now we are going to apply filter right so this is just a data initialization export const we can also put export const here so this is the app component we are exporting a line data now we are going to filter the a lines so currently we are passing the a line data to the child component let's call it as a landing page and let's define this so what we are doing we created the context we set the airline data and there is one method this method should be able to change the data of airlines based on the alliance you are selecting and in the, the landing page is a child component so landing page will always receives the updates if you are using consumer inside this component and try to receive both these property from the context so we can create a landing page so we have to i mean now this is the designing part import landing page from our component so here we can create a uh, components and then there we can create landing page so we'll go to inside the components and here we can create all the things landing page dot tsx it should be tsx <coughs> okay so if you see the ui we have a couple of things like header is there these uh, filters are there and then these tiles are there so obviously we cannot put everything in a single component let's try to divide them into a couple of components we are going to have a uh, components inside components we can have the landing page and we can have a simple header dot tsx and we are also going to have a tiles inside tiles we can have like okay tile list or tile list item kind of component okay new file tile dot tsx and then this is a tile list and then we can have another component is tile list item dot tsx this also we can convert into tile list okay so this is what we have now what we can do is it's all about uh, building the ui from app.tsx you can see when the application bootstraps what we are doing i also need to add a formatter because this is not getting formatted what we are doing in the use effect we got in the we are getting the a line data setting the a line data same a line data we are passing in the context so the landing page as a consumer can access this airline data from here so we'll go to the landing page tsx and here this landing page is a home of the whole app right so we can say const landing page and it is going to use couple of things it's a functional component and we are going to define the types because this is a functional component you can set the type here as we were doing functional component and here we can import react comma functional component from 
react <coughs> and we are also going to use use context so let's import that also so const landing page this is the type and here we are going to return something from this now it will stop complaining because now we are returning something and here we do have something in the context so how can we use it how can we get it we already know that there is there is something like use context hook and you just pass the context name airline app context okay and here I can get I can access the whole everything which is available in the context from that I just need airline data right and that airline data I just wanted to pass to my child components so here we can create a simple fragment and here I wanted to use a header component which I will create now and then I can create some filters let's call them actions and then then I have uh, the tile list component and I will be passing a line data as a line data from here okay simple and then we can just do export default landing page or you can also do the named export so this is how now we just need to define the the header component actions and the tile list now you might be thinking about the typical component design actions should trigger the action no actions component itself will access the context and it will be able to dispatch the action from this component itself it doesn't need to send a callback to the parent component and i'll send the event callback to the app component no even in the tile list also we can access the context like the whole airline data we don't need to pass this airline data you can use this airline data inside a tile list component but it is just uh, for the better code structure airline data i'm passing actions and header component so i just need to design all these components now so i will quickly uh, the header component header component is nothing but a simple logo so i will just copy and paste from my template okay then there is a tile list component tile list component is nothing but it is accessing each and every tile and then it is just showing okay this is the component data so this is the tile list let's uh, write this const tile list okay let's copy couple of things from here <coughs> So here it will be tile list component again the functional component and it is going to access some props right what are those props we already know we are passing the airline data so tile list props this is some some new type we have to create because you are passing the props and we are writing TypeScript so we have to define the type for everything so here we are passing airline data where a is small a line data is of type capital a a line data okay we already have a line data this is the new type we have defined and this is an array of a line data we got this as a props right we don't need to access the context here now so this is style props and in this component this component we are just going to pass the props so it is airline data which is of type tile props tile list props okay and what it is going to return it is going to return just uh, a simple list because it is going to render the child component It is always fun to write this so here what we are going to do is we have a line data in the props what we can do is we can simply do a map this is initialized with empty array and the app component so we don't need to worry about undefined or something 
we are accessing the each and every item so it is a line data okay the type will be a line data because from the array we are accessing each and every airline and from the map we are going to return our component tile and we are going to pass the data and we are going to pass the key as unique key this is the rendering part okay and tile component we have to define so let's say if everything is fine then we will do this but what if the airline data is empty so we can say airline data dot length this is an array if equal equal to zero then we can just simply say is okay you just show the loading part okay it always auto completes and i keep typing loading and then export default tile list <coughs> we don't need context we just need airline data but what it is why it is complaining we don't need give context okay we can format this a little bit So this is our component and we need a tile component. So import tile from tile component, tile list item. And we can design this tile list item component, which is nothing but a showing, displaying the information about a particular tile. Here you can see we are also showing some data on the mouse over, right? And we have to design this logo text and also little bit of css will be involved there so we can use our talent there i will just copy this style list to a tile list item and then we'll change things tile list item and here also you can see we are going to use the props tile list item props or you can say tile props because it's individual simple tile and it is getting the data which is of type airline data not an array so we are getting the tile props from the tile list item and we are accessing the data only okay so our component is this tile component we are doing export default and this component only showing the tile information right so typically how it looks like if you just simply design it then it is just a simple do and uh, we are going to style it like we need to put a logo and uh, the airline information all those things so we'll add a class name logo holder here we can put the the logo of this image src and here we are going to get the the logo which is data dot logo url will keep filling all these things i'm just putting the information for now right now the other thing is the data dot name So we have a couple of properties data dot name data dot phone data dot alliance okay we'll restructure this with the styling either tailwind or some other styling so we just got the tile component we are showing the information export default tile and here we have a condition okay when you do the mouse over then only this information should be shown so what you can do is you can add an own mouse over action here on mouse over and you can write a logic when this happens handle mouse over <coughs> and what you do what you can do through this a simple you can create a toggle flag and you can just set them as a true or false 
something like this on mouse over on mouse out okay we are using use state we need to import that and then hover and set hover right so we are checking on mouse over and then there is on mouse out also on mouse leave or on mouse out we okay and handle mouse out and based on this hover flag you can actually show and hide a couple of things if this is true then show this otherwise don't show something like this okay styling part will come later now we have actually designed all the components the tile list style list item header landing page landing page was pretty much simple and then we also have actions actions is the component which we haven't built so this will be actions.tsx this is having three checkbox okay and when you click on to the checkbox you know which filter you have to apply okay okay now let's design our actions component okay so here it is const actions and this is again going to be the the functional component actions functional component and this is error function and what we are going to get we are going to get the apply filter function from the context let's uh, use context and here we are going to pass airline app context so it's from the airline app context there is something called apply filter uh, where it is let's see airline app context inside this we have apply filter okay we are going to get that first of all import all these things use context we already imported functional component we can add and then airline app context okay small mistake apply filter is something we are accessing from the context and this apply filter is going to set which alliance we are looking for in the filter so let's use a simple because we are going to write a checkboxes so we need to track which checkbox is currently clicked set filter and here we can use a use state and inside this we can have a type which is initialized with empty okay use state we can add in the same I import statement and here we can have a change filter this is something which is going to be triggered from the HTML checkboxes so event of any and here we are going to return something that return will be the checkbox fields right let's see how it looks like we are going to have an input text field input type uh, input type checkbox and here we can also set id like which filter we are going to select that we will check uh, uh, how we can filter okay there is some attribute we need to pass the lines code based on that we are going to filter this and when you do on click what we are going to do is change filter which we have defined here this we are going to trigger from everywhere okay change filter okay so this is the input text field similarly we are going to have multiple checkboxes input a uh, type checkbox why what is missing here on click id type checkbox box 
okay checked i mean is it really checked or not so that we will just check based on the filter dot type if filter dot type is equal equal to ow then that means this is checked similarly we have to add okay react refers to umd global what happens okay we didn't import react that's why it is complaining now everything is sorted okay similarly we need to import three checkbox we will take care of the design later so first of all this is ow then another code is let's say is st this is going to be shown as check if the code is st and then sa okay simple right three checkbox when you click on to this now we need to just send this selected filter to our context so that context can filter out the data okay so from event object when you click on to the checked particular we are going to capture two things type and the id id and if it is checked or not okay because id will tell us if this is checked then what we can do is we can just set filter and we can just specify the type with this id which we just received and then apply filter we can call the context method and we can pass the id if this is not checked what we can do is set filter reset means let's say you unchecked a particular checkbox that means we have to reset the filter none of the checkbox is checked and we have to show all apply filter and we can just pass the reset and then it is this method's responsibility how to deal with this particular case let's say you clicked on one checkbox and then later you unchecked it that means now we have to reset the filter export default actions okay now we have everything ready we can start okay header component let's import all of these actions tile list okay all the components exported here we are exporting this and then there is a landing page header so everything is ready a line context now uh, let's go to app.tsx and let's see what apply filter will do here because in the apply filter we are passing something we are passing the id right the type we are passing here so based on the type we need to filter the data so the type string if type is reset so here we can say so there is a one another hook we need to use for the filter a lines data we can just simply say is a filter a line set filter so if that is the case because now we are going to reset the filter that means set it to the original value of a lines and return from here if the reset value is coming otherwise that is otherwise case we are going to create a filter so we will create a copy of the a line data and then based on what you have selected we are going to filter the data so here we can say filtered airline data equal to data dot filter simply array dot filter and here we can just pass i i dot alliance there is an attribute if this is equal equal to the type we have received from the filter if that is the case set filtered airlines okay 
we can just set this with this new data okay and here filtered a lines set filtered a lines this data also we are going to pass to this one not a line data because always it will be a filtered data filtered a lines and we, while fetching the initially we have to set the filtered a lines data also to the same data it's like the same filter scenario right what we used to do is let's say we have a array list of array so what is the data source the array is the data source we do not change that we always create a filter array and filter array only we pass that so whenever you change the source array we set that output to the filter array and filter array only we are passing here filter a lines filter a lines and once we are initially when we are fetching it we are populating both the data the the data source a line data source and the filter a line data source now when you send uh, the apply filter to the context we will just check if it is a reset or it is a filter based on one particular checkbox then we will send the we will, we will extract the filter using error dot filter and we will set the a line filter data this is it okay let's run the application so this is the output of our create react app and you can see we are able to see the checkbox, the actions, and all the A lines, the, their image, the, the A line name, and we should be able to filter from the checkbox. The next thing, the next stage is I wanted to make it really nice. So what I want to do is I want to do, introduce the Tailwind CSS here. So for that I created some folders like Tailwind config, post CSS config. And then I was looking around like what is the best way to use introduce tell tailwind in the TypeScript project okay so we will be using cracker config the same way we were doing earlier and first of all we have to install the post CSS auto prefixer and all so I will also add these commands npm install tailwind CSS post CSS auto prefixer and all First we will install these and then we will install Krako and we will write Krako config and we will write the Tailwind config. Okay, so I will, I can use another terminal, <coughs> Krako config and we can also install the Tailwind forms. We can also use the Tailwind forms. So these are like couple of libraries which you need to introduce in your project. After that, you can have uh, the crackoconfig.js. Let's create that. And then we will use cracko script instead of npm, uh, sorry, create react app script. And it will use auto prefixer and the tailwind CSS. Okay and this is our node.js all the installation is going on and then we can use tailwind css tailwind config.js this also we can add post css we don't need now because we are using crackle i can delete this and then because uh, tailwind forms we are using as a plugin so this is the basic configuration i copied from my template <coughs> Here you can define all your colors, all you can actually extend the configurations, tailwind configurations. Dark mode even you can enable the GIT as a true. I can add that. That is just for optimization. Okay, now we have Tailwind config. Now we just need to update our package.json so that uh, we can use a cracker config. I mean, earlier I was just trying to introduce the Tailwind and I was using these type definitions, but these are really not needed. Now go to our script 
then we will introduce couple of more scripts like the start build and test okay so let's take a final look on the configuration this is the cracker config this is the the tailwind config okay the the one important thing which i have seen with this whole setup is the configuration i mean uh, the package versions i mean create react app the latest version doesn't support the cracker you need to upgrade it and somewhat you might end up struggling with this okay so what i will do is i will share this project this is like a boilerplate which you can use for react create react app type script with the tailwind okay and uh, this is the minimal setup we have to use the post css 7 if we upgrade the the create react app to the latest version then i think there will be a compatibility issues we have to upgrade the cracko we have to upgrade the post css to 8.x version if you don't want it to get into those kind of trouble you can use the same package versioning which i'm going to share in this package.json okay now coming back to our project if we see this is our project look like and i think now we can see the tailwind styles started getting applied that we can check by applying some tailwind styles like here i have applied margin mt8 container and the flex and you can see these styles has been applied and what do we have for the styles if you see in the app.css we have already imported all the tailwind utilities components and the base so automatically one while bundling we will be able to capture all the tailwind styles okay now coming to our uh, stuff like how we can restructure this a little better way uh, so whenever we change the color it takes some time because it is loading and then only it is reflecting the, the background color okay so this is our i change the margin to the padding background color is 100 branding i think we can change the width to 24 okay and it's reloading that is the only thing like uh, whenever you change you don't want to wait for that, that duration for changes to get applied okay so now let's say we are fine with this header we don't need uh, some custom things let's customize these actions okay these are like uh, checkboxes what we can do is we can have some kind of a header before we put the checkboxes so let's go to our actions.tsx and we can create one outer div and text uh, 3xl let's say this is the text size and do we need text center so i'm talking about this filter currently and these are the check boxes we have so we need to display them inside a horizontal grid right so this is the filters we have i think one excel is fine text excel and then we can trap them in so we do have uh, all the check boxes so we can put these individual check boxes in another span tag or div tag because these are now currently open now let's say how we can align them inside a box i mean center aligned for aligning them to a center we can simply put class name container flex mx auto so they will come centrally aligned okay we can have this filter also center text center so first we see the filter then we see all these three check boxes better to use sandbox for the quick development okay so we can inspect things and let's see okay this is this looks like uh, it's trying to convert it into a column right so we have a display flex but the flex direction should be column let's see if i put flex direction 
column then we are able to get something aligned here we got the filters we don't need the margin and padding we can just we should be fine with only padding okay then we have this container which should be a justify center okay this is justify center we have this checkbox and all so what we will do now we just we can divide this into the three column grid okay and every column will have a checkbox and the label okay and then we can have this nice and clean grid inside this so i just added a couple of classes here you can see container uh, this is align center and to set the flex direction column there is a class flex column flex row so this is a flex direction column first uh, div contains the filters and then another div contains all the checkboxes okay all the checkboxes are also centrally aligned inside a container mx auto so margin auto from left and right and then justify center and here we do have four three divs having three checkboxes and the span tags i just put a padding left one so these are centrally aligned now we have the grid this grid is important here we got all the containers now next important part is this particular grid and we can start applying some classes to this and how we can do this we have to go to the tile list component so tile list is the parent div here we can have flex container so this is all about flex here flex template columns i think we can take help from here we can actually set the grid column also like a grid grid column gap is 4 this can really help here because what we want at the end is having a grid of three or four columns let's say there are four columns inside this grid and flex direction row margin auto grid grid is the column four okay and all the divs will automatically get aligned let's see this now we see the four columns okay we can actually reduce it to the three to make it look better okay now it's just all about uh, so this is a three column grid okay we can set some border border radius so we can just set it as a rounded border two we have to check some utility classes how we can customize this as a card so what we are looking for is customizing this uh, particular card by putting some shadow putting some padding and centralizing this image so first of all border radius border width and all so we can say rounded md rounded common and then so i think we already applied these classes but we also need to have some kind of a padding from left and right so here we can just set this is our margin horizontally this is 4 padding vertically 2 so so we can get some padding from left and right. i think we have mx auto so mx4 will not be applied let's see what all classes are applied here so here we wanted to limit the width of the box that uh, either we can fix it or what we can do is we can fix the container width how we can do it uh, there is a width uh, utilities like uh, 1 by 2 3 by 4 i am putting 3 by 4 that means it will cover 75 percent of the width and height width then you can fix so here 3 by 4 means from the horizontal container we already have a margin auto mx auto so it will consume only 75 percent of width and you can set either like the four column grid 10 column grid it will only occupy the third 75 percent so i can just set uh, here width of this container in the list is 3 by 4 
and we can have a four column grid and then the, all the other data which we do have inside a tile like the name and other attributes we can set them so this can be h6 this can also be h6 and we can align all the items vertically so what we can do to fix, do that is simply we can set this also flex flex column right and uh, all the elements will be aligned vertically flex flex column so we have the image we have the h6 div and there is one more thing i think Alliance name, some other attributes also we can add. Phone. Okay, so we do have image. Still, this is not a center. What we can do to do that is justify center. And here also we can do text center if this is not getting centrally aligned. Okay. Last name MX Auto. Let's see this. Uh, now it is at least the images are centrally aligned now we can take care of the text text either we can use the class name text center right and we can say text excel to excel we can add the same for all the attributes We can also reduce the font size. So here uh, there are the font utilities also there. Font size. If we don't want it to put uh, text Excel and all, there is the basic like text SS. We can use text SM. That is, that would be better here, I think. Small. Now this is our final outcome. At least the, the content is centrally aligned. We can do the filter. Okay, this is the, the final how our product look like. We can we can actually customize it and we can use a couple of more things. This is when we are fetching all there is a, some delay because there are like thousands of the records after I click on to this checkbox okay you can see the scroller so this is just a basic uh, understanding and how to do the tailwind setup with the TypeScript how to use the context API how to use the tailwind utility classes how we can create a responsive UI all those things are covered in this uh, thank you everyone